welcome to our webinar on NFTs and the legal and regulatory issues surrounding them with a specific insight into one of a really promising NFT projects called Jenny Dow and looking into some of the things that they have to deal with as a DAO from the legal and regulatory perspective. So we're going to straight away dive into the presentation. So I'll just start by giving a brief introduction into the who we are. My name is Nathan Vandy. I am the head of legal and uh, regulatory affairs committee in Waseo and I'm part of the committee that does coverages and audits on DAOs that want to be regulatory in compliance whilst uh, committing to uh, decentralized governance. So let's start by looking at Jenny Dow as an example of some of the work that we do. So we looked at Jenny Dow as an organization just to understand who they were and they are responsible for acquiring NFTs and adding them to a vault controlled by Unicly's protocol smart contract. So that's the underlying protocol that Jenny Dow is built on top of. And they have issued tokens called UJenny which gives the token holders certain uh, social and economic rights and the ability to purchase and transfer NFTs as well. As I said, the, the governing rights of Jenny Dow are, um, are mainly accessed through Jenny tokens, which are dual purpose ERC tokens minted through Uniquely Protocol and it has social governance and also sharing rights too and also economic rights as well that will be developed further on so Waseo completed a coverage on some of the legal and regulatory risks that Jenny Dow members may face that they are unaware of just so that they are in the full knowledge and have clarity over the legal issues that they may face so that they can start working towards dealing with them, hopefully alongside Waseo. So one of the issues that we saw was to do with token issuance and this main token issuance is mainly, token issuance laws mainly applied to the jurisdiction where the token was actually issued and the token was issued in Hong Kong and the current formation of the Eugeni token with the, the different rights that are attached to it and that will be attached to it um, can be seen as a security token and security tokens have certain issuance obligations that currently the Eugeni token didn't go through and we have seen multiple times that regulators um, don't see kindly to this and have even asked some projects to stop. For example, if we're thinking about the Telegram issuance of their tokens, they, they were seen as security tokens and they had to completely stop because they didn't actually um, issue the tokens properly. So this is some of the issues that we just wanted to bring up to the community so that they're aware of moving forward. Um, because obviously people are going to be putting their money into these projects moving forward. So another issue is that Jenny Dow doesn't have a legal entity, which means all of the actions of the active members of the community will be seen as, will create joint and several liability. And basically what that means is that if one member of the DAO does a criminal action um, or is liable for damages um, based on some of the actions that are happening in the Jenny DAO, it's not limited to just himself or Jenny DAO. Each member of the DAO that is active in a DAO can also be asked to recuperate 
the money for the damages and this is another important issue that the members of Jenny Dow when collecting NFTs and uh, that, that may, may come up with a few IP issues that we're going to see soon are aware of uh, that they are illegally exposed due to the fact that there's not a legal entity which Jenny Dow is actually which will insulate Jenny Dow members so a really big issue which is hasn't actually been mentioned a lot in the nft space is intellectual property and these are there's a variety of issues so one one of the issues is that when you have an nft it's a representation of the rights that are attached to a digital art and you can have um, so if there is actually a situation where someone uses an art that Jenny Dow has and monetizes it and doesn't recuperate the money back to Jenny Dow members, well, then a legal action would have to be faced. However, as I mentioned in the previous slide, Jenny Dow doesn't actually have a legal entity and therefore it would have to nominate a legal representative to do that during the period of time where they don't have the legal entity. Um, this is a, a, a quite a big risk and something that Jenny Dow should do in before these problems come up rather than after. Also, that there are issues in enforcing property rights, as I said, um, where it's just Jenny Dow on its own. There are also different intellectual property rights that can be claimed that Jenny Dow should be aware of. Um, this was just a brief overall coverage, so we're going to go into the smart contracts later on. Well, there are different types of rights uh, that you can attach to the IP of the of the artwork, and different digital artists have different rights that they give. So, for example, you can have a certain amount of royalties if your artwork is used in an advertisement or or so forth, and you'd have to understand the ratio of royalties that Jenny Dow members are getting compared to the digital artist which has issued the NFT in the first place. And these rights to royalties and the licenses to use the artwork are different in various jurisdictions. So it's important that Jenny Dow understands that it chooses a jurisdiction where the IP laws should be made um, and understands that uh, there are times where applicable law mechanisms will kick into place um, because the uh, jurisdiction where Jenny Dow might be domiciled might not be the jurisdiction where the IP dispute actually takes place. Also, Jenny Dow should be aware of the way that the intellectual property rights are coded into the smart contracts so that they understand all of the IP rights attached to the different uh, NFTs that are minted. So moving on from intellectual property law rights, you also have investment law and at times artwork will be considered an investment asset. And this will require additional legal procedures from Jenny Dow as an organization. And if the Dow doesn't comply with these laws, there could be certain financial um, risks that Jenny Dow would face and reputational risk too. Another um, issue is financial surveillance laws. The new FATF guidelines just highlighted that NFTs can possibly use, be used for money laundering issues. And there is a good chance that more and more jurisdictions are going to put obligations on any organizations that are uh, using high value, transferring and exchanging high value NFTs to oblige with certain financial surveillance laws. And this is another area which would be important for Jenny Dow to be able to understand in order to put in place the right um, policies and procedures 
so that they are not they so that they are in compliance with the law as mentioned beforehand the applicable law of Jenny Dow will be very dependent on the situation so for example where the NFT holder originally was could affect the applicable jurisdiction um, and it's not always the jurisdiction where the DAO is domiciled or the founding team is domiciled that will be the applicable law um, in the case of disputes. However, it's most likely that the jurisdiction where the, op the website is operated will actually be the applicable jurisdiction for Jenny DAO. So yeah, this is a big part of Waseo's mission actually, to educate um, and inform people so that they're more empowered moving forward. And it's important when joining the DAO that the members are aware of not just the technical risks, which is becoming more prevalent and known, but also the legal and regulatory risks, which are starting to develop more and more now as well. It's important that the DAOs organize and develop and implement compliance roadmaps to achieve sustainable growth um, in line with legal and regulatory frameworks. So just to give you a little bit more color about who Waseo is, we are an established non-profit organization which is looking to build in a, a trusted environment where compliance seeking DAOs like Jenny Dow, hopefully, and competent service providers can meet in our association by becoming a member and deal with the legal and regulatory issues. The reason why we have this organization is because there needs to be uh, a point where both DAOs and service providers, lawyers, regulators and policies share information in order for us to move into using decentralized governance in a compliant way because right now there's a lot of uncertainty and that uncertainty is sometimes um, gamed by service providers um, who prey on uh, DAOs who don't actually understand the law um, and therefore the DAOs are, don't get a good service but by establishing this association where we vet service providers who can actually supply DAOs with the right service that they need for their different needs and we have an environment where DAOs are able to get representations through the use of Waseo as an organization too. We hope to start to deal with a lot of the issues that DAOs have to face to usher in this um, vision of compliant decentralized governance. These coverages that we're going to be doing over the next couple of weeks are to highlight some of these issues um, in order for the communities to start being aware of them, of them and start working with Waseo in order to start dealing with them. And as a disclaimer, the information shared in this presentation um, was sourced from public uh, sources and it should not be construed as investment or legal advice. So thank you so much for the, listening to the first part of our webinar today.